beef. Oh, yeah. Yeah, beef's going to go well. It's not going well. He said it's smoothly. Really? I hope. He goes, yeah, it's going to go well. Your uh, design and everything going <laughs> really <laughs> smoothly. I think so. Yeah. <coughs> wow. Well, Did anybody look at the code? Like, did you look at 134.17? I did. I read everything. 134.17? Yes. Okay, I have a, okay. brought a copy. Okay. No, I read the whole code. <laughs> just for your application? Yes, I just wanted to make sure there was nothing creeping around in there. <laughs> All right, one second. Asking myself all the way through, did I miss a meeting? <laughs> you did, in fact. I did? Yeah. Last week? Not yeah. last week, two before. weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. I had one. There was a meeting with the historical, but not no, no, the zoning board and everybody else. Yeah, that was, no, that was before that. That we had one, yeah, we had that one, plus then we had the next Thursday was our regular meeting. 15. That wasn't our regular meeting. Well, we meet the second and the fourth. Second and the fourth Thursday. So that's the eighth we should have one. The the one I came was the first one. Right, yeah. because that was a special meeting. That wasn't our day. Uh, that was the zoning board's day that we joined them. Okay, I did. I felt so, you no. know, I, I, I kept asking myself, did I miss a meeting? We'll get started. Okay, we'll call okay. to order the March 22nd meeting of the Village of Cold Spring Planning Board. Uh, chair's remarks. Uh, we, I think I, I sent everybody the response to Butterfield. Yes. So you guys have that basically just to kind of document, but also to be very clear that, you know, we're not looking at any of the approvals that are in place, but just to kind of talk about um, what, what was understood, what the events were. Obviously, the arborists all agreed that the tree should come out. Um, and so we gave them the go ahead to take the tree out. Uh, I did just ask them to, if they could shed some light on the arborist comment that his protection plan for the tree was that the tree would be a certain distance from, you know, from the corner of building five, which seems to be very different. So based on substantial conformity, part of the discretional zoning change, I was actually on the board at the time, was defining substantial conformity and it had to do with you couldn't, basically that there would be a site plan that would be approved and the residents would have some expectation that it would look like that when it was built before they give a discretional zoning change. And so that was um, substantial conformity was we sent it over to the planning board at the time, um, I was on the village board at the time, to ask for them to kind of define it and they gave us, you know, feet and degrees. So I just said, you know, it, it, we do at least have to kind of clear up why the arborist believes um, that something is different. Not, not because of the tree, the tree is already gone, we're not, there's no bringing the tree back. Um, but certainly for us to know that they are complying with the site plan, which is really just a code enforcement issue that we'll just make code enforcement aware that, you know, that there's this, there's this question and obviously the, they can't move buildings that much. Um, it's about 10 feet. So they have that letter, so they'll, they'll probably proceed. Um, I did ask that even though we're, the, the, amend, the easement really just talks about trimming the tree because the tree overhangs into the two residential lots. It doesn't talk about kind of other things, one of, one of them being replacement removal or replacement. So I said, you know, we, while it's not in there, it's not clear. I mean, obviously the village is involved, there's an easement in place, so we should, we would like to be involved in the, the selection of a, a, the specimen and size of the replacement tree. And also if they want to consider that it might be somewhere else. I mean, it was kind of a lot of stuff jammed in there. It may not be the best place for a tree. Clearly a tree that gets that big and starts to overhang and over into the other yards where, where you can't really trim a tree, especially for such a small backyard. I'm not sure if they're open to that, so we'll we'll see what their response is. Yeah, the other um, thing I thought of too, Matt, was where that tree is, you know, where the, the, the existing tree is, the copper birch, it's kind of like behind the building, you know, so it's in a pocket where it's yeah. not going to get any sunlight. It's, yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's not a great So, I mean, to put a new tree here or new trees, yeah, whatever they're going to do, kind of really tree. defeats the purpose unless yeah. we move it. I mean, they may want some sort of a specimen tree for that courtyard. Isn't there an outdoor courtyard for the uh, for the community room? Right. 
any senior housing requires that you have a community, you know, a common, uh, common room, um, a certain percentage of the square footage. So I think there's a there's part of it they wanted outside, mm. um, and so I think they wanted a tree by that, but they could put a different tree there, a, a massive tree in that area. But we'll see. It's it's up to them, I and mean, we don't we have no rights to kind of force them to do. But if you know, if I just asked them if they would consider it, so we'll see what their response is. But, but it won't be a while because those things are still not there. It, how long does it take them to build anything around that area when? Oh, right now they'd just be doing removal. Yeah. Yeah, it's so just removal they, at this point. Yeah, uh, no, they're not going to be replanting a tree yeah, until yeah. it's probably until well, the very last day. Okay, to yeah, me, yeah. it looks like they're already digging for the excavations for the buildings around. And they're bringing the a lot of sewer, and a lot of uh, a lot of the wastewater retention stuff, right. or the stormwater retention stuff. Uh -huh. I also spoke to Ashley uh, and Justin from AKRF, the professional consultants that were hired to review one twenty six Main. Um, they review. I, I don't. They had not yet. Luckily, that was a condition of our approval. They had not actually yet reviewed these peak flow rates that from 126 that um, that Glenn had thought they had reviewed. So and said they thought them to be somewhat deficient, a little bit low. And so they asked if we have you know any standards that we manage to or somebody to review it. I said we do not. I said hold them to just whatever the industry standard is to manage the you know, manage their storm water. So they did that, and then we had a conversation today about that basically the way. The way New York State works is that an existing condition is a five-year look back. So he said that really it will greatly improve the existing condition. Um, I had said, well, can we not talk about an existing condition that would then be removed? He said New York State allows you to look back five years, right? So you can take something away, but if it was there in the last five years, that's the existing condition. So how much rain runs off of a forest floor is one number, then half of it's house, and then how much, you know, the, it obviously you have more runoff. So, because I said, you know, we have... Obviously, there's a lot of municipalities we, we're dealing with, you know, I and I, you know, the inflow and infiltration of the sewer that, you know, that just overwhelms, you know, so taking stormwater is a, is a big deal. So um, they think it's fine. Um, they think it's better than fine. And obviously, it obviously improves it because it, there's the, the, um, the grid that supports the gravel and keeps the gravel from getting compacted at all. That then, so, so you know, we're going from compacted gravel um, and also not going with, you know, full concrete from front to back. So. They think we'll be in good shape. Yeah. Um, correspondence, nothing. New business. Uh, we have no new business. Uh, we'll have to wait for the minutes because we're going to need. Oh, no, wait. Judith, David, Matt. No, we can't do the minutes. Actually, I didn't make a copy though. Squeeze out and make a copy of these. Okay. Do you want to call James? Because he was bringing the big one. How many copies do you want, Matt? Uh, just uh, three copies, please. Thank you. He thinks it, it has it always been seven. The meeting. You haven't changed the, your. You haven't changed your start time. No. The other boards don't need this early, but. I would think he would know. Yeah, he knows. He knows how the calendar works. He definitely does. He's on it like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, one uh, story I heard over lunch today. Uh, somebody asked a random question, and then uh, uh, actually, my daughter said their their old camp manager saved a tree a few years ago is they had a huge birch tree and uh, it, it's the biggest ever and everybody loved it but one year it wasn't doing well and so on so finally they said it's going to be removed but then they got somebody come and look at the tree and then they said it's savable what they did was they dug a trench around it and exposed to the, aerate the roots yeah, yeah big heavy roots and then they nailed it down and Thank injected you, Congealed owl blood. Oh, for oh, nitrogen? Nitrogen. And that yeah. tree survived. It's still huh. there. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I'm sorry, not you. 
So it's it's what my daughter said today. It was really yeah. interesting. Well, anyway, so yeah, just to get a nitrogen infusion. Yeah, I used yeah. to put nitrogen on cow blood on our garden, but um, it would attract every dog and skunk in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, that's interesting. Move through the minutes. Good to know. It's just what she said today. I think everybody knows as well that nine Morris Avenue, we um, removed their application. Yeah, I saw that in, yeah. in, in the news. Um, they decided not to go forward. I'm sure Aaron was relieved. The, I think the applicant is not Jonathan Rose. Did, did we? Did they say that? Let me. It was I'll nine. Think. It was the corporate. So it is. Um, low stand, the Low Stand Foundation. No, Nine Morris Avenue LLC, I believe. Oh, okay. Which was set up by the Rose, whatever the company name that Jonathan. The Low Stand up. Foundation. Yeah. Let's just cross out Jonathan Rose. We'll just say it's charitable organization. Uh, in bullet point one of the board comment, I'm just going to add. Um, Therefore, a, an informal review was requested as to why we're talking about something we have no purview. Yeah. Why was requested by CBA? These are very thorough minutes. Yeah, Thank a, lot of, you. a lot of details, yeah. I can scribble less if you like. <laughs> no, that's very good. no, no, it's actually really helpful when you go have like this week we had a question and you know, I was <laughs> it helps to have minutes to go back to. Also, I'm catching up and after tonight all of the planning board minutes are up on the village YouTube website, so if you, want to the it, if you want for to read it, I'd if rather not watch it, them. <laughs> well, if you're looking for a specific oh, yeah. something, no, those were I love those things. I would, I, I often was sending clips to the applicant. I thought we had res we had resolved that the planning board does have, does have to approve site plan. We were talking about it being vague at first, and then John finally landed on that the planning board has to approve the site plan. Mm -hmm. For which? It's the the board comment. For, for, your, for, for Seven Marion. Oh, yes. No, you always knew that. Well, I mean, that's the only yeah, reason we were. We, hello, we, hello. Oh. Find a chair. I will. And there's a spot for you. Okay. Um, no, it's the whole reason we're here is you have to approve the site plan. Yeah. Right, so I'll just I'll work on that a little bit. Okay, I think the the Copper Beach Street is just quarterly. We'll just change it to quarterly reports. Yeah, and the fencing. I'll give you some notes on that as well. Um, were, were they quarterly reports or by monthly? It's actually not quarterly. It's every other month. Yeah. Right. Okay. Can I motion to approve the minutes as amended? I move we approve the minutes as amended. Three eight minutes a second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, very good. All right, so hold on. I'll do those. Uh, let's see. So, I guess let's wait for him. Let's wait for second at this point. Mm -hmm. oh, you, oh, we're waiting for James, too? You're just going to bring a bigger printout. Well, I have a question. Is it, you know, at the end of Marion and at the end of Kimball, this, this whole field where people dump trees and dead, Yeah, dead. that belongs to the village. So is there any plan for that thing? Because we can see erosion on the side of yeah. Kimball. It's pretty it bad. It just really is bad. And, uh, you know, first is eyesore. It's, it's actually dangerous it, for the people standing up on Benedict. They don't know that it, it's, <coughs> it's actually eroded under. Yeah, it, it just, you know, from the top you can see just yeah. uh, tree branches, but actually it's, it's empty in the bottom. You should prob probably yeah. mention it to the highway people. Okay, so yeah. that's not uh, the no. village things or who, who is in charge of that thing? Uh, the the highway department. Yeah. Highway department. I would start with the village clerk, just yeah. ask the village clerk who to talk to. Okay, yeah. because that, that looks really bad. It All does. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, move on to old business. Uh, Stephen and Judith Rose, 7 Marion Avenue. Uh, text map for the Is one. it 7th or 9th? Two. I'm sorry, what? We're 7. Uh, does it say on the, on the minute it says 9th? No. No, it's 7. Oh, that's Morris. Okay, sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Good to be careful. For construction of a new 700 square foot accessory structure to be used as an art studio, the studio would have front on Kenwell Avenue with no curb cut for vehicular access. That's correct, right? No curb cut, no curb, but no vehicular access, no parking. So that's a yes. <laughs> Subject property, right? The studio would have frontage on Kenwell with no curb cut for vehicular access, right? Right. Subject properties of historic districts and referred to the historic review board. Let's code in the planning board for site plan approval per 134-7. So we saw the project last week. Um, James is going to, is expected at some point. Um, did people have a chance to do their review? We had talked about uh, kind of wanting to do a review. Um, I mean, I had gone through um, the village code because prior boards had you know had been very nervous about power and about and um and then i discussed it with the village attorney you know and i said we really can't be overreaching and making decisions based on people not complying with the code so i think what we'll do is we, we can put notes on the site plan to basically say this is not an occupied structure right. this is not um you know and that we'll we would put all those notes on the plan do, um so I am interested just in, just to confirm that with respect to the toilet and the is it is, you said there's a there will Slop be a, sink. a toilet and a sink and will the toilet be plumbed to the sewer line? Mm -hmm. Oh and, yeah. And where will that be connected? We'll we'll have to make a connection to Camel. Okay, alrighty. And so in your discussion with John, did he opine on whether or not that is a trigger for um, like a, a kind of a residence qualification. Or? It's not. Okay. And no. electric will be cabled in from Kemble. We want to go there underground. A, there, there is a uh, pole there at the corner of the property on Kemble. Okay. So there will be a separate meter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. It won't go through the house no, at all. It'll yeah. all come from. It'll Kemble. be separate. Right. Yeah. Right. And so. And again, there's no that's no that's not a trigger for any kind of a um, a residency. Well, um, again, it's back to the gating issue, which mm -hmm. is what is what is the applicant saying the structure is, mm -hmm. right? They're mm -hmm. saying that it's a, that it's an accessory structure mm -hmm. to the main building, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For a per, for for a singular purpose, mm -hmm. and that it needs these things. And y there's nothing in the code that says. You know, I mean, I know there's all this worry about this, and I know prior boards have been very clear on that about mm -hmm. not putting power in, not putting sewer in, because it made them nervous. But you can't really, you can't make decisions based on, you know, on yeah, people. No, no, absolutely. I, I on people. On, in I'm the code. Say, yeah, one second. Yeah, on not complying with the code. Right, right. Right? Yeah. So, but I think we should be very clear 
on the site plan to say that this is an accessory use structure that is not to be occupied. Another thing that has to kind of be nailed down is that it's not a commercial structure in any way. Right. That while that while you're going to produce things in there, nobody's coming in to look at it there. Nobody's buying it out of there. Um, it it kind of it kind of hedges. It kind of straddles a gray line. Where is it? Is it a production? Right. You know, is it producing things to be sold? Right. But you know, I mean, it it, it I think that um, as long as there's not traffic. Um, and it's not really a commercial facility that's producing things and that people are coming in to buy, which I think would also need to be a note on the site plan mm -hmm. as well as on the resolution to basically say that it's the studio mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to, to use where there is no public interaction, where there's no, um, and that it cannot be occupied, mm -hmm. right? I think that's probably the safest way to deal with it because I think that's really what the code allows. Mm -hmm. I don't, the code doesn't really kind of allow you to talk about like what ifs and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I think it's kind of overreaching to say, if which is what we've been doing right? you know, from the all these years. I mean, even with mine, they were very there. nervous when I put power in my garage. I'm like, it's not not. Built well, the, the reason I was asking is, is not because I was worried about its use. I was wondering if there was a trigger that that would require us to consider it something else. If if those were and. If, if there's no such requirement, then fine. <laughs> I mean, did you, you what did you find? Did you find anything or? No. Yeah, no, I mean, no. it's it's pretty, um, the only, okay. one thing I haven't looked at though, really quick, I didn't Does finish have looking. have a Kimball address? No, it's, it's no. part of our property. Okay, yeah. so. Won't have an address. Hey, James. Hey, right. 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 so that's um, what I'm saying. Why, why is um, they're offering to uh, to you, switch you rooms can't if that fits. Sure and everything I guess. Your existing house. Well, it's just that. It's just us. Just that would be almost okay. impossible to right. do right. anyway because you got that. You want one of these, James? You got a wall. Yeah, I said so much today. Just slide forward. I'm 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 fine. Yeah, this. You know, it's a good planning board. Even the chairs are going to. So I don't know if um let's let's yeah you know, let's have board discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it just to be above ground the tuba or no. the dug in? Oh yeah, very well, sure. A lot of work. Yeah. All right. Let's let's kind of focus on the board the yeah. board discussion. Um, My apologies. I thought we were start starting at seven thirty. Okay. Okay. Um, we're at the discussion part. So has so one thirty four seventeen are the supplementary regulations to mm -hmm. accessory buildings and garages. Did folks look at that? So it's um an accessory building garage may be located in any required side of rear yard provided. It's a building garage should not exceed one and one half stories, which it does not, right? No. Um, it, well, is that as far as ridge height? The is that about the height or is that about the existence of stories? It's about existence of stories in my reading. Okay. And this is all one space. Right? There's, there's a storage, there's a lock, storage right? lock, yeah. but it's not an occupied lock. So this building garage should be set back 10 feet from any lot line, and if mm -hmm. separated from the principal building, should, any shall not be located less than 10 feet from it, which obviously it's a <coughs> massive lock. <coughs> this building garage in the aggregate should not occupy more than all such buildings or garages in the aggregate should not occupy more than 30% of the area of the required mm -hmm. rear or each side yard. That would be like your garage in your side. Right. Garage. I mean, you know, it reads like poetry, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like we're certainly conforming by a long shot the the lot area coverage. Oh, yeah, absolutely, lot area. Yeah. But even if you control for um, for what would be considered the front of the the front of the lot, it would be it would be. The area that is your rear yard and your side yard, they're well, it's still well within. Okay. Mm -hmm. No accessory building shall project nearer to the street on which the principal building fronts than such principal building. So obviously, it's not on the street that the house fronts on. Mm -hmm. Should topographic conditions be such that practical difficulties would be caused by this requirement with respect to the location, that's all frontage. Um, Storage of unlicensed vehicles is prohibited. In the district structure, mm -hmm. so I don't think there's really so, anything. So you can't in there. park any unlicensed vehicles in there. <laughs> I don't think you can park them anywhere in the village. 
There was a wreck there when we moved in. Oh, that's right. When I re when I reviewed the that section of the the code, it appeared that this was all well within yeah. that and met any requirements or so. Yeah. Um. Okay, you. I mean, I think you. We've been walked through. You want to walk us through it quickly, James? Or? Well, I, you know, it's. Uh, it's a. Um, what, it's a. It's a tiny little building. It's uh, obviously. Um, All things being relative. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, you know, it's a. Um, an accessory building uh, for a non-commercial use. Um, it's. Uh, um, going to be a very low energy building, um, low energy consuming building, so that um, it's uh, minimizing the impact on the environment um, and uh, tying into existing utilities. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, has the did the HDRB collect escrow? Escrow. They didn't. No, no, no. Okay. No, they just scheduled a date for the hearing. Oh, they're ready to go to hearing? Mm -hmm. They already have a date. Yeah. What's the date? Last Wednesday of March. Yeah. Okay. March or April? April, sorry. The only thing that I... 25. The only thing that I want to talk to John about is just that it's that it's really not a commercial building, mm -hmm. right? That, you know, if you're producing things for sale, mm -hmm. right? Right. I mean, that's always kind of been a gray area. Right. Mm -hmm. um, is, there a, is there a distinction between commercial and retail? We're not Do talking we about retail. Today? Yeah, it's not talking about right. retail, okay. but a commercial building could anything, look, you can have people, you know, kind of fixing up cars in their garage and ultimately selling them, but you know, it mm -hmm. takes a year or two years or whatever, because it's kind of a hobby. Mm -hmm. And that could not that's not really commercial. But if you're but if you're constantly producing things for sale, the question is, is that a, is that a commercial use? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to at least get John's opinion on that just to make sure that we're you know, that we don't, we're not setting precedent. Um, mm -hmm. But that would be my one concern. What do you what do you think? I think that's wise. Uh, and I'm in my mind, the reason I'm squinting is I'm trying to walk around the village in my head and think about where people have, where people have uh, occupations on their home property or in there, where they. Yeah, well, there's well, there's the there's the compatibility of uses, right? Which is our is, is the public coming in, and is there parking, and is there deliveries, and there's all that, yeah, right? Which is not not the, not the case here. Question here. here. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's actually mm -hmm. the most important piece, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, in yeah. my well, mind, that's what that I just want to make sure that if we if we do an approval for something, we know that like a product is being produced mm -hmm. to be sold, right? I mean, that you sell the art, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's the goal. That's or, the, that's the theoretical. So. Are people buying it? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's the theoretical construct. Yeah. Your 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 defense could be nobody buys it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's not an art gallery. The work is is. Oh no 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 not a gallery. Not in other yeah. places. Oh no 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 absolutely no no. Um, but no, but it's um you know it's a place of it's a it could be you could say it's a place of manufacture. Right. Yeah. And I mean, right. Look, if you're making yeah. if you're baking cookies and selling yeah. them, if you're baking, yeah. you know, making there's some. Or something yeah. like that. Well, exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, exactly. That's what I was and that's my concern. Is just that it's the exact same thing, right? Because right. basically, it's but it does become a quantity type thing in right. my mind. Like, I, I mean, I saw a case where guys, you know, was just a, a teacher who was, you know, would restore vintage cars, but you know, took him a year or two. So he's not really running an auto shop. Mm -hmm. He kind of has a hobby and then sells his mm -hmm. toys, right? Well, does it help if I tell you the IRS considers us a hobby? We don't <laughs> file a a business for Steve's painting. We we, you know, if well, he sells. Well, it's because I don't make any money. Right. <laughs> it's the IRS calls us a All right. hobby. All right. It'll, it's well, just, it'll just, just be a quick opinion from John. <laughs> no problem. Yes. Okay. Very good. And obviously, that it's it's very small. It complies with you know. I can't imagine HRB is going to have any issue with it because of obviously the neighboring structures and the, um, are already uh, contemporary, if not modern. Um, it's actually smaller than your average two-car garage. I looked that up, mm -hmm. and we 
this. I'm sorry, wait, how, 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 what's the size of this place? It's uh, 700 square feet. Yeah. Yes. Right, and the... We don't have an apartment. Yeah. And it, this plan that I just handed out to you um, shows it, the adjusted uh, sightings. 30 that's by... 33, 33 feet by. wide by... Um, um, So it's, it's 21 feet deep um, plus a 10 foot deck and 33 feet wide. So you, yeah. you are saying it's one and a half okay. in, one and a half stories. It's bigger Not than it's many long. houses. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that if in the code compliance chart, um, I think Vera was, in my employee was a little overly zealous in that I minute. Mean, I, I would say it's really a one-story structure. What, what's the height of the, uh, the roof line? The height of the roof line. It's taller than. It's taller than normal, but it's but, but the the storage loft starts very high up. It's on on tilt. It's a shed roof, yeah. so only one side is high. Yeah. So it's probably taken from the average grade to the ridge line, right? Yeah. Let's see if she has the height of here. It's on this one? Um, I'm seeing it's a... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the height on here. It's height. about... Uh, 35 feet. Yeah, it's on the... It's on the... It's 35. That's, no, that's, that's two and a half stories. Oh, no, no sorry. No, that's, that's the maximum. That's the maximum allowed. <laughs> Whoa, sorry about that. Um, it's and that's that thing? first bit is on the uh, principal residential structure accessory building is the next thing down. Um, so it, it, um, she listed one and a half stories height, but it, it really should say one story and uh, then the actual height, which is approximately ten feet at the um, at the low end of the roof, and you know at about five feet at the high end. So. And then it's on it's on piers. It's on piers. Yeah. So down to the grade is another three feet. Uh, approximately three feet. So it's about thirteen at the uh, low end, and because of the hill, it's almost you know touching at the high end. So it's you know going to be somewhere around sixteen or so at the high end, approximately. And that's five feet long. <coughs> yes, I'm adding another foot for the depth of the, the um, down to the soil. So eighteen. Thirteen to eighteen. Uh, 13 to about 16 because of the slope. Okay. Okay. Good the hillside. I'm sorry, this is the Kemble end is 13 yeah. and this is 16? Approximately, yeah. And then obviously since it's on piers, the there's no there's no real change to, um, to stormwater runoff. Mm -hmm. Correct. We're not changing the grading at all. It's, yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. And the roof's just going to shed onto the, onto the ground. Correct. We have gutters and leaders, but yes. Hopefully a ring barrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to collect the water. Yeah, you might as well put a sister in if you put daddy. Although you're just doing yeah. a Pierre's sign. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? No. Um, so I, I do, I'm just uh, wondering, you're going to opine, or you're going to ask John first to opine on the question of commercial and whether or not that's a, that's a, an issue for mm -hmm. use? Okay. But I mean, we could, that could just be a condition of approval. If we get the board wanted to move forward tonight, do you think that he would be answering us in a yes or no sort of a way, or would he? Oh, yeah. Okay. I suspect he's going to say it's not. Mm -hmm. I suspect he's going to, you know, kind of chew on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to do that because obviously we have had that issue in the past right. where, mm -hmm. and it was considered to be a code violation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. a, a very you know hotly disputed mm -hmm. and you know. Uh, producing, you know, artistic, you know, handmade products for sale, right? It's not a whole lot different. Right. Um, so I'd like to at least get 
the, the village attorney's opinion to say, you know, we're, that we're, um, we're not we're on the right side of that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. and we'll especially because it's such a, I mean, there's a lot going into it, right? I mean, there's a, you know, I mean, so, you know, it's not just kind of a, it, it's not, you know, just kind of four walls. I mean, it's being plumbed, it's being powered, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so will we, uh, will we, if we vote on this tonight, subject to John First's um, recommendation that, you know, um, the use is not an issue, um, will we tonight itemize the notes that we want to see or any of the changes on, on this? I'm just That's wondering, a good is, point. Is I'm, wondering actually, yeah, I'm wondering if actually, yeah, I'm wondering actually if you yeah. should be. Important elements. And, and while we were talking here, I yeah. was looking over and I actually noticed these data. So from the lowest point to the very highest point, um, we're showing it to be 23 feet. 23, 2310. And 23 from the grade? From the lowest end to the high, high peak. Because of the grade. Right. right. So it really should be looking at average height. I'm the sorry, from the average grade, yeah. Average grade <laughs> from average height. So, you know, that's certainly overcounting it, but if we... So 23? 23 to 10. Oh, almost 24. Yeah. But that's, again, that's seriously overcounting it. So it's taking it from the very lowest part of the grade to the very highest but part of the grade. But isn't that like saying that a, like a peak, a ridge line is overcounting? Well, it should be, yeah, it should be to the average height of the roof, and it should be from the average grade. So it should be down the middle here, not, not a... Oh. So we're according we're, to who that should be. That's according to the code. Okay. So we're we're taking it from this low. Yeah. But it's average grade to, to the but it's average grade to the ridge. I mean they're not a, they're not allowing for shed roofs in the And code. it's to the average well it, 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 it's to the average roof height. To, to the, the the mean roof height. So it should be to the center of the roof. Whether it's a a sloped roof or a peaked roof. But the code refers to the ridge line, right? Right. Where's the ridge? Uh, wait, no, I, it, my, it's, the ridge is at the high end. Yeah, And it's that's the what average, yeah. average roof height is the code reading. So okay. it's the average grade and the average roof height. So it should be. When it is a shed? Well, it doesn't differentiate between a shed. It, it's any and structure, and yeah. I mean, it is, you know, if we were to count that loft as a story, which is not high enough to be a story, but if we were to count that as a story, um, the um, it, it's still considered a half story, right? right so right. That, like that's it's not like we're overbuilding. If that were even occupied. Actually, my, my issue isn't isn't about like yeah. oh and and what the eventuality of that is. Right. I'm just wanting to I want to understand for myself. Yeah, like, yeah. So, what is the requirement and where the? Where I mean, the, it really should be the height. It, it, it's taking from the low point to the high point mm -hmm. here, and really it should be taking from the midpoint and the. the mid. But, but even at the extreme end, it's you're 11 feet point. lower than the extreme on the code. Correct. Right. Right, right. No, but that's two and a half stories. You're not allowed to have a two and a half story. You can have 35 feet. 35 you can have, feet. no, not on a one and a half. They, the 134.7 restrictions restricts it to one and a half stories. 35 feet is a two and a half story building. I think it's... Um, yeah, according to our research, it actually doesn't say what that height is, but maybe we need to look at that carefully. But I'm sure what the height of one is. The maximum right height here. of the structure. The vertical distance measured from the average elevation of the finished grade around the perimeter of the building with not less than one measurement on each side of the building to the highest point of the roof. Highest point. The highest point. Well. The mean height between eaves and ridge for gable, hip, and gambrel roofs. So it's it's the highest point of the roof. Okay, so the highest point from the average. So from, from the average the, grade. Average, average, average grade. grade. Yeah. Right. Which and we took it from the lower end of the, the grade. So we're, you know, the difference in grade. Let's say it's four feet. So it's like twenty one feet to the um, to the from the average grade to the highest peak. What is? I don't even know if this is defined in the code. But what's the height of a one and a half story building? If a two and a half is thirty five. You did up nine feet? Yeah, about nine feet. I mean, the habitable space is, it's where code and well, state code and what, what is the habitable height? What, what, what's Seven the feet is the minimum for yeah. habitable space. In, in interior, yeah. and then you have to gross that then, up, then, right? Yeah, then you have roof floor depth, and then the roof depth. So, so uh, nine, like nine? nine is approximately good. 
Okay. At least nine, yeah. yeah. It would take at least nine because of because mm -hmm. of the framing. Right. Um, so you can. But you'd still have a roof framing, the roof frame anyway. So it's right. just reducing. And if you're and and a half story is half is the half story would be half of that. I mean, is that what that would be? It's going to be like. Four and a half. A half stories. No. It's half stories still going to have the same height mm -hmm. in the center, mm -hmm. but obviously the as the eaves come down, only mm -hmm. 50, more, less than fifty percent can be can be traversed. Mm -hmm. You know, can actually be walked through. There's also well, but in this a height requirement, like an average height requirement, and, and that's where state code, which is really the the law of the land, differentiates. Well, uh, let's say the village code differentiates differs from the state code. And really, the state code definition of what is a habitable space, you know, the really right. the village code needs to, to align to that because that's right. that's really the basis of the right. law. But that's not in play here. Yeah. And so the so that means that for if it's there if it is considered a one and a half story structure, it has to meet a certain minimum. Right to be considered right. habitable. Well, to really, to count the half store, I mean, you can't. You're not. It isn't. It's a lock. We're basically just talking about ridge line. Right. Okay. Right, so to the it highest isn't, point it isn't of the ridge. Yeah, there's no right. question of, okay. of sto right. No, no. My only question of story is I don't know actually what the what the maximum height for a one and a half story is. Right. Do you? Well, if it's a habitable space with with the framing and everything, is roughly nominally nine feet. Right. That's what I would. And you take yeah. that from the. 35 that leaves you with 26. Right. If you're at 2410, then you're under that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I. That's what I would think. That's right. what I'm saying. It's nine mm -hmm. feet. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You take 35 minus nine. Right. Yeah. But that is only. So I just want. But that is only applicable if it's a res. If it's going to be an occupied. No, no, no. It's, no, this is accessories buildings. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and really, like, the height the of that block, seven, The 13417 amendment, mm -hmm. which is not that old, you kind of looked at these accessory, it was, try, it was kind of further narrowing down these accessory mm -hmm. structures in the... Mm -hmm. Exclusive of, exclusive of residential. They're not, it's right. only about accessory okay. structures. Right. Mm -hmm. So, be that as that may, we'll, we'll have the site plan will be updated so it's are, are, are you saying that the information in this, this is accurate yeah. oh okay mm -hmm. all right yeah. great mm -hmm. so j just for definition sake you know the half the half story mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's you know instead of an eight foot high ceiling it's a four foot high ceiling but right, right. I got, yeah, yeah I got that you know that half it's the occupiable area is half of the floor below it, mm -hmm. and that's what they mean by half story. Half floor is this way, not this way. Right. <laughs> so the the two and a half that you have as far as the code on your plan should really say one and a half. Is that correct? Um, no, that well that the first half of our um, zoning conformance chart right. is about the residential structure. Okay. Um, so the second half accessory building, then we talk about the half one one and a half okay. story building. Yeah. And so, is this something that would? Is this something that is publicly heard? Um, we're only required under code to have a public hearing for a change of use. Okay. It's not a change of use. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's our discretion to hold a hearing. I don't. I would say we don't really need a hearing because the the HRB, HRB will do a public yeah. hearing. Okay. And I think really the most impactful things are just the you know the you know the the, the change to the you know to the view shed and mm -hmm. the fact that the you know building doesn't exist there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it will, but obviously they're not doing a curb cut, they're not doing parking, right. so it's pretty, you know, it's, um, but, you know, who knows, the residents yeah. come out and they talk. And yeah. There's, I think it's also important to note that um, from the Kemble Avenue side, um, uh, we're, there's a sliding barn door, which will actually be um, basically um, a, like a blackout kind of curtain, 
as well as the, the, the lights are dark sky compliant, so the impact will be almost invisible at night. So I'm there, you know, not that dark sky is written into the code very clearly or, you know, um, with a lot of emphasis, but, you know, the, the visual impact of this at night will be invisible. So I think that's just worth being aware of. People have problems looking at this at night. No, it's just that uh, you know, as far as I, I do think, you know, I do think, you know, as far as um, preserving view sheds and things, you know, like not creating light pollution is important. Yeah. And and um, we've together done a lot to address that. I am like we'll see if Stephen walking back up the house with his flashlight. Oh, with my flashlight. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's green. It's so green the building, so energy efficient, which is what that's in the. It's actually in the code. code. No, the co there's actually a section in the code that said says encourage green building. Oh, in the comp plan. No, in the code. There's oh. actually a. Oh, a, right. That meant a paragraph. Yeah. I thought they didn't get into colors. <laughs> well, I thought that he was saying that. That's he picked that's out the colors to match the hillside. <laughs> okay, what else we got? So, nothing? You good? I'm not good with this. I'm just looking at the, the, the plan. So, it's from this from the side of the road to the to the edge of the studio, how far it is, and so on. That's what I'm looking at. Otherwise, I have, I have no problem with the with the building it's, itself, because you know, that that part needs something. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nice to to have it. It's just uh, uh, you know you got a green building. It it's not very high to block their own building, and then the if you dig the new sewer line to connect into the Kimball thing there, and the power line, the, the pole is right there. So uh, assume the meter. I want to bury that. I want to bury that line too. And like our site is everything is buried. Yeah. But the the thing is on the side, it's all exposed. So the Casparian's tree fell down and knocked the whole thing out. We were we were out for 40 hours without mm -hmm. power. The Casparian's tree did. So those are the things that's very. Um, very obviously that we need, but you know whatever we can do to to try to prevent the power outage, the this and that. Mm. That's that's what I'm looking at. The other thing is the we water. We can't help there. That's, yeah, not, that's, that's, that's not what this board does. Yeah, no. <laughs> but the other thing is the water. As long as, because as they said, there is nothing blocking the water coming downhill. So. You know, it's that's. But there's no change here because no, it sits on piers. Yeah, that's that's. So I mean, very, yeah, that would be, uh, you know. That would be an issue. Yeah, but but these days, one thing um, I think we should keep in mind is the 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 uh, environmental changes these days, uh, the climate changes. There's so much water, uh, so you know one thing we actually is in, in collecting water. The other thing is just make sure that it's not somewhere in the main path of water that goes through that damaged building. Mm. If that's that's one thing we should look at because the water really is just getting so much it's coming down from the hill there and that's that's one thing just make sure that the water is, doesn't rush onto the building whatever we can diverse that's you know it's not it's our on, job to it's on piers and yeah. our beams here so well there are a lot of things we don't know what's going yeah, on these okay. days yeah it's pretty high yeah but but that's tsunami <laughs> I, I have no uh, objection to the thing here yeah. So Joe would have no problem with it. Joe on um, the blue house. The Lello. Joe, yeah. Well, they'll have they'll have a public hearing actually. The planning board, will, the okay. HDRB will have a public yeah, hearing yeah. to get input from the public because they'll. Yeah. Uh, you guys have already been given the blast zone. Obviously, you have if you we have the neighbors that you need to I, notify. Well, I have to. I still have to do that. Is there a, is there like a template for that? Um, I, I've written yeah. letters 
in the past, like in okay. Portland. No, it should it should be the, the notice. The oh, notice that's, right, that's going in the paper needs to be mailed that's out. Right, yeah. 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 I'll okay. help you with it. Okay. Okay. Design it so carefully <coughs> so people will be oh yeah nice. Uh, <laughs> was the notice written? They should, they should have written it. Okay. I forgot that that's right. That's and they gave you the blast zone, right? The, like who's getting it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's things have gotten a lot more confusing since we switched methodologies here. Um, I'm not sure. If, I think Jeff is the one who fixed that deal. No. No. The announcement? You mean the no, uh, no, the, the blast sound, but. No, 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 the board no, decides no, the board that. Board okay. Okay. Like, we don't, there are some boards where it's written into the code, like yeah. it's adjacent, across, and, you know, <laughs> catty corner, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Ours isn't written in. We, we pick it every, We pick it on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. So, like, we would do, you know, I would probably do, you know, two on either side, and then across, obviously, you have Marion, but uh, or Marathon across. The HDRB is adjacent properties. The what? For the HDRB hearing. Yeah. Those notices. Uh, are theirs, I think, is written into there. Yeah, yeah I think theirs is. Yeah, I I'll make that's sure a thought. Yeah. I'll, I'll follow up with the company. And so so you should be able to actually look in the code in Chapter 64 and just figure it out. I think it's just. I think it has to touch it. Yeah. But but what about so not marathon? Um, no, no, no across, across the street across as well. The street. Yeah. So yeah. it would be marath. It would be. Yeah, it would be a, there is nobody across the street. Yeah, it would be the, the owners. owners of Marathon. Mm -hmm. It would be the owners of the folks on the corner just, of Kendall and Thing. Yeah. It would be BFW. It would be Galello. Mm -hmm. right? It would be Link. Okay. So what about people on Marion? It would be ne your next door neighbor. On Marion? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the Minkies and, and Joe's house, the, those are the two immediate neighbors, otherwise it would be yourself. It's, yeah, the, but it's the property. The whole property it's goes related. up to Marion. Yeah. You know, our pro this yeah. is This is all part of... Yeah, our, yeah. 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 Anyway, the code they really should, you. They should do both. They should do both frontages, though. The I don't, I'm, it, I don't know if they will. It may say in the, in the code. Uh, it may not anticipate a situation like this because it's so unusual. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, I, yeah, it, the code. But I guess if it's <laughs> yeah. So when you look at actually, James, when you look at the code, yeah, I, I would, I would take the interpretation that it's that it's the Kemble, that it's Kemble as well, because it's all the better that those those folks get a notice yeah. and are you know they don't they don't raise yeah. issues later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's the blue house to the left because there's only one house between you and the VFW right between this mm -hmm. and the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So yeah. So you. It's adjacent. Yeah. It's the adjacent property owners, including those across the street from your parcel. It's not about. It's not like about. No, but the, the parcels. Building. Don't forget the parcels up on Marion Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I, my point is, is yeah, you'd have to get. Like they don't go in. through like. The people down on Kemble don't go through to Marion. That little house, that little blue house? The little blue house? On Kemble. Yeah. In the corner, that's Joe's. Yeah, that's Joe's. But that's adjacent. Okay. Yeah. Because of the lot line? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. right next. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if they would interpret it that way, but I would I would interpret it that way to just say if anything touches it all the way around. Mm -hmm. You know, not just, not just the frontage side. Right. You know. I'm only... Yeah. As a part to give to something like yeah. how I had read it when I had applied for my own. Yeah. Like when yeah. I did the porch, I, my neighbors in the back had to be notified. Yeah. Yeah. The Constitution. The boulevard. Reach out to Cal. The, that cool that brownish house right there. Can I add to it? Yeah. Good. Uh, what do I do? Are we? Are people comfortable going forward? Yeah. Okay. Might as well vote pending on what John says. With just yeah. the only. Uh, the only understanding that we want is just a non-commercial use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think we're comfortable with the ridge height because obviously I think that like nine foot is a is a reasonable deduction. Mm -hmm. Dave agrees, so yeah. must be right. Yeah. No, I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, well, it's certainly reasonable. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, do we, if we vote now, do we have to identify the notes? Oh, good the point. Plan? Yeah. I mean, I think, so I think what would be important, either on the site, probably on the site plan as well, just that, that a few things, just that the, so obviously one of them will be the opinion, property for a non-commercial use, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, it, the concern also would be short-term rentals, right? You know, that you have a you have a bathroom and it doesn't take that much to then put in a shower and a kitchenette and, you know. We'd have um, to get a building permit for that. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, mm -hmm. understood. But a lot of people don't. So that's what I'm saying is just put a site plan, just put a note on the site plan to basically say that it's that it's not an occupied structure so everybody's clear. Mm -hmm. um, so that it's in the record so that people aren't applying for a, a change such as that, that something they approved because they didn't think of it that way. Yeah. Is it, and it would be sufficient simply to say that this is not an occupied structure? Or do we need to go into great detail? It seems like Probably what we ought, we probably ought to actually just ask John to write this. Maybe what we ought to do is just, because we'll meet again before your public hearing, right? Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. they're, they're hearing the end of April, so that's really a whole bunch of time in between. Oh, end of April? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh. Yeah. I said March, okay, yeah. 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 yeah, so why don't we do that? Why don't we, um, we should probably collect escrow and just ask John to just do. What, what's the escrow for? John. Hey, John. Um, and, but you know, yeah, for a site plan review, uh, it's in the code that you collect a thousand dollars of escrow. Um, it's not going to take much time, but I think we should ask him just right. what, what's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Just what, what the language should be just to, just to make sure that we're, that we're clear that we're approving an accessory structure, mm -hmm. you know, especially when something's plumbed and, and heated and. I, I think it, you, it's. Not, not a residential good. structure. Right. Yeah, what, I think the terminology yeah, that you Because yeah. if you say occupied, yeah, then occupied it, it doesn't gets, work. It's, an you know, accessory. it's a studio, so it's going to be occupied. Yeah, it's an accessory. Yeah, well, it's but not occupied for a residential use, mm -hmm. right? You can occupy a building, but not in a residential, not for residential use. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Let's just ask him what the language is. That's what. And I want to clarify, it is March twenty eighth. That March. The HDRB. <laughs> not, not no, I think they, they, they put it off till April. I just they put it off till the end of April. Oh, okay. I have it down as the twenty eighth. So. What? I that is that next week? Yeah, that will be next week. Kathleen is away. Right. It's not spring break. Right. As I understood, it, they, oh, they had right. to put it off till the end of April because of her. Because yeah. of spring. So her her spring break. Okay, so this is correct, 25. 25. April. That's okay. good, because he wouldn't be able to get all those letters out right. yeah. by next week. Oh, yeah, it'd be too short. Because yeah. you got three days. <laughs> okay, crisis averted. So you're pulling, you're not going to offer a motion at this meeting? We're deliberating about that right now. Yeah, we're still deliberating. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I think we ought to, I think... I just got lost. I think we're, it's not going to take John more than like an, an hour to do this, maybe less. So, so let's hear from, from John and then about what he recommends, and can we ask him specifically about um, about construction, wording of the, constructing the resolution? Yeah. Not that he, yeah, you know, maybe he should even, should he write it? We should have him write it? Yeah, it yeah, yeah, like, oh, okay. absolutely, I always have him write the resolution. Oh, okay, yes. I don't do the, no, 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 not the binding stuff. Um, and it's not going to take him any time at all. Uh, but I think we should, especially with with the the current dynamic of short-term rentals too. Not mm -hmm. obviously that's not what you're doing, but obviously the house could be sold, and it'd be very easy for somebody to convert it to, and to just say, listen, it's plumbed. It's you know, they clearly has an intended use, mm -hmm. right? We want to make sure that that intended use is clear on the site plan, that it's not that that's not the intended use, um, especially with the proliferation of Airbnbs and. Now, right now. Um, Right now, there's no intention of like pulling in off Campbell, or there's no curb to cut. But you're not going to be. There's no tra no anticipated vehicular traffic, um, and I'm just thinking, do do we want to make note of that also on the? It's on the site plan that they're not doing it. Okay. Um, it, doing a curb cut, you have to come before the planning board. Okay. If there is no yeah. curb to cut, must you come before the planning board? I don't. I don't think it physically requires the, the cutting highway. of the curb. You're basically the highway department has to kind of talk about okay, there's going to be an entrance. Access. What's the safe? What's right. the safest point for that ingress and egress? Right. Okay. So you have to come back and get a full site plan review yeah. to say you're going to have you know you're going to you're going to change traffic because you change traffic flow. Mm -hmm. And is there an address on Campbell for this lot for the back of this lot? No. Okay.
Well, basically, it, it's an attachment or addition to their Marian house. Oh, no, no, no I know what it is. So there is no address I get what that temple. is. I'm just wondering yeah. if, if we subdivided, if the, we'd if get the an lot, address. Yeah. Was, um, yeah, from Joe's house to our house. Joe's is 30 something, ours is already 46. So there's like 10 numbers in between. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do a subdivision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten Let's do it. <laughs> All right, anything else? So we'll do that. So if you want to mm. drop off escrow with the clerk. Um, do you just do, what's the financial <laughs> risk here? <laughs> financial risk? Oh, what's the, oh, the cost? I don't imagine it's going to take him even an hour, to be honest. I mean, he's just basically going to. Um, but, but you want $1,000. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what's written into yeah. our code is for yeah. site plan review. Um, and approval, it's a $1,000 escrow, which we're supposed to collect on everyone, which we actually have been very good on. I just didn't do it on this one. Uh, not, not because it's a board member, because I thought we wouldn't oh, actually oh. need um, need anything. Um, but we have, I have collected it on all but one application. The only one was 35 market, because we knew we weren't really doing anything with that. Um, and then we'll have John just do this, and then John can write the resolution, because we're not even gonna write a resolution um, even for 35 mark, because it's basically just, we're just basically filing a site plan. Um, but it's good to get those site plans on files. Like with 35 market, same thing, which is okay, now the parking is over here, this is actually not an occupied structure anymore, so again, it helps with things like Airbnb, and you know, it's just like, you know, the, the, you know, the approval was that it was, this is now a garage, not a, you know, not a carriage house, and so that's, we, it's, it's best for the village to have all this stuff in the file, right? That everybody understood what was approved, so there's no question going forward. And it's the same thing here, that your use, and obviously we trust you that this is your use, but obviously the project, the property could change hands, you, or your circumstances could change. You know, you rent out the house, right? And then somebody starts renting out the, you know, as a cottage, because it doesn't take a lot to really, to modify, and people would be happy to say, the 700 square foot space and trees, you know, the price from the field, and walk to the train, and, you know, so I mean, so, you, know. you want to move there? <laughs> so say you, you, you may be able to you may be able to, uh, to subdivide and sell it as a tiny house. It's already sold. Not Ta this week. Tiny house living. Talk to us in ten years. Watch the deer feed on the cadmium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. We're breathing the, the, gl the glowing deer. <laughs> All right. Okay. But I don't think they'll be. I think everything's fine. I mean, I think it's fine. I think it just, I just want to make sure that, because, I mean, you, I mean, Judith certainly knows me, is so I'm never, like, looking, like, here and typically, like, <laughs> five, ten years down the road, because it's, because that's really the way you, you know, you kind of uh, avoid setting precedent and that you, that people kind of understand what these structures are. It is not the right way to do it, it's just not approve them and not allow people to pound in buildings. It's just, that's, you know, you can't, I think that the, the prior decisions were kind of overreaching. Um, but I think notes on the plan and writing the resolution in a certain way is 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 what should be done, and that people should be allowed to proceed. And you assume that they're going to follow the code, right? Not making decisions that you don't believe they're going to follow the code and restricting on areas that you don't really have the right to restrict. You don't. I mean, you're allowed to put power in a toilet. You know, obviously, you don't want to walk back up to the house to go to the bathroom. We prefer you not going outside the property. So, Thank you know, I think you, it, Matt. <laughs> Why do you understand that? Well, you turn deers. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so I think that uh, I think it all works. So you're holding off on the boat then. Yeah. yeah. But I don't see any. I don't. I personally don't see any issue. Obviously, uh, nothing's, nothing's guaranteed to the board. The board will vote, but I don't. Um, I don't see any issue at all. It's basically just getting the right language on the on the resolution. Um, like I said, really with my towards precedent. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I think the bridge height is fine. I mean, I think that it's completely reasonable. Take 35, take nine off. Say 26, you're below 26, so it's roughly a story and a half. Um, Bless you. Thank you. And, yeah, and James said it's closer to 21 or something, actually. And you won't be Yeah, you're below it anyway, yeah. so I mean, it's, I think that's fine. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Any public comment? Question about the, the copper birch? Copper beach, beach yeah. Beach. At Did they determine what caused the, the tree to, to die? Was it the digging around? Because I see, you know, they had dug out so much we soil. Don't have a, we don't have Quincy. Is it Quincy? Was corner? Who's the corner? Yeah, Quincy. Uh, I'm showing my age. Uh, <laughs> CSI, I guess we should say. Um, but 
Well, there were arborists in there, correct? The arborists were in there, yeah. There, 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 there seemed to be a little bit of misunderstanding as to when certain protections were triggered. Um, the arborist came in uh, from Save a Tree that did an evaluation of the tree. The tree had um, some rot, but you know it, it was considered to be a relatively healthy tree. You'll hear different versions of that, but no different than as us as we age. You're not 100% healthy. That doesn't mean you're ready to be put in a box. Uh, you know, it's just, you're just getting older. And so it's like, okay, you know, yeah, so there's rot. It's not like the rest of you rotted, right? You know, so maybe you get a little bit of limp. So the tree was, it was an old tree. It's a 70 year old tree at least. Um, it, there was drought, which the arborist, which their arborist um, spoke of. Unfortunately, had it had been clear that all these protections were supposed to be done immediately, um, it, the outcome might have been different, but there's no guarantee because it's an old tree and they don't like this kind of disruption. I mean, you dig all the way around it, you're cutting major roots, trees, you know, they look for water, they find water. You don't really know when you do things around them whether or not it's, uh, it's a critical root, it's not a critical root, they all kind of look the same. Um, and that's where it's finding water. The tree wasn't watered um, during the drought that we had last fall. Um, and there were, there were protections that there was a, I, th I think as ultimately there was a misunderstanding or misinterpretation of when all these protections are starting. And I think that they thought that it was just, you know, they could put the fence up and then do all the, a lot of these treatments. They did plenty of treatments. The, you know, the, the owner of the property was, you know, was fertilizing, was doing certain things, um, but not all of them. So the long story short, it, 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 it's an older tree that was stressed, right, from just the work that went around it. Whether or not some of these, you know, some of these treatments would have worked, you know, is we, we're not going to know. Um, watering it would have been very helpful because the tree's, you know, at risk because just like at a garden center, you got to keep the root ball wet. You know, a tree's been sitting there for 70 years. You don't need to water it. It'll find water. It'll be fine until it does. Um, but, you know, it had already been excavated around. I think the misunderstanding was there was two triggers. There was prior to any excavation and then there was excavation within the critical root zone like when you start to get really close to the tree. So I think there was just kind of a misunderstanding, but the, bil the village frankly bears some of that as well because we probably should have been checking in code enforcement to say, hey, show me these reports, how's it going? Wait a minute, why aren't you, you, know, why aren't you mulching the tree? Why aren't you watering the tree? The, their interpretation of it, which is reasonable, was that that came when you really were excavating right next to the tree, mm -hmm. not when you're elsewhere. But the tree obviously is feeling the impact of all that compression of soil, um, and it just it changes things, you know. And well, so, you said there's, there was a misunderstanding between what the owner or the people, the arborists who were taking care of the tree. Who was the misunderstanding between both? Because the uh, the arborist taking care of the tree is not the village arborist; it's the owner's arborist. Okay. But what I'm saying is that w it would have been best. In hindsight, is always 2020. To be fair, it's not a criticism. It's just that the village kind of checked in on this tree protection plan and said, hey, show me your reports, what are you doing? Then the two arborists would have talked, um, but the village doesn't have an arborist, unfortunately. So, I mean, and in order we have a budget to kind of have an arborist check in on trees, but I guess code enforcement could have at least said, you know, there's these every other month reports, can we see the reports, are you doing, you know, are you treating the tree? And at some point, it, somebody might have figured out that it was, um, that there was more they could be doing, right? And it was probably that, and so I think that... Um, so the village has a code enforcement. So after it was decided that this tree had to be saved or, you know, kept and, and treated a certain way, so somebody from the village is responsible for following up on that code enforcement? Is that how it works? It, it, well, it, it, I will tell you, we've never had anything like this. So will there be something in the future, say... Well, I think now, St. Mary's, well, yeah, no, I know, think now, something. I think now that there is a tree committee, this predated the tree committee, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they, they actually it, kind of uh, coincided, but the, this tree, this tree would not have been within the purview of the tree committee because the tree committee is only, uh, only focused public. on public, public yeah. village, village, yeah. village tree. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a private tree. I mean, it's a, a public interest, but um, certainly. But it's it's owned so by it would be a 
But at the time, was it a, a private tree? Yeah. It's always a private tree. It only become it only comes into the public arena and discussion because it was, part it of was a it, well, yeah, because it was part of the approvals. It's a it's a valued aesthetic resource of the village. The village loves the tree. They love seeing the tree, um, and so it was part of the approvals. It was a condition of approval, okay. and then part of that condition was with the best of intentions, including the developer with the best of intentions was to save the tree, right? And so an arborist was brought in to come up with a plan to do that. Um, and there's no, there is absolutely no guarantee that if you followed that plan to the letter, sure. the tree would have made it. Sure. Trees do not like that kind of disruption. And it's a lot of disruption. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's going on many years as opposed to, it's, you know, the quicker you do it, the quicker you get the dirt back, the quicker the tree has time to send out new roots. Um, but that hasn't happened, right? Because it's been disturbed but left. So, um, yeah, so unfortunately, like I said, we don't really, this is kind of a first for the village, I think, where a private tree was part of a site plan, and, you know, so it's just, but it was a special tree, right? And that's yeah. obviously why everybody... So nothing could be done to save it like you had suggested before with... Well, uh, we had two, we had two arborists, yeah. the village had two arborists look at it, who thought it was beyond, you know, really kind of healthy growth. The tree's not dead, mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to, it's not going to flourish. It's not going to fully leaf out. It's not going to, you know, um, and it's going to struggle. And then I will tell you when it gets built, it's, it's really kind of, it's right in the crux of a building. Um, if the residential buildings actually get built along Paulding, it, it is, it's actually in maybe a third of one of the yards. You know that's what the easement is about—to not trim that canopy. Because if a tree comes into your yard, you're allowed to you're allowed to trim it back. Mm -hmm. um, but there's an easement that you can't trim it back that that was recorded. Um, and to the west of it, there's a there's going to be a large underground parking location. So the parking. It, so yeah, it's deep under, excavation. It's, so, it's, yeah. so there's deep excavation well, that's and then anyway. yeah. and yeah. instead of going down eight to nine feet, they're going down thirteen to fourteen feet. Yeah. You know, so it's because you're you're, you're going to park underneath the the, right. the structure. Mm -hmm. So it's so after digging the roots will be blocked from <coughs> migrating in that direction, you know, because there'll be a, a wall. Uh -huh. So the, I mean, the, the site plan, the site plan isn't a, isn't a plan that is about tree preservation, mm -hmm. you know, the site plan is. Yeah, so and I think, I think we would do things they, differently. I mean, I would certainly suggest that code enforcement be aware of that plan and would pull it and just kind of, you know, you ju it's just language. I mean, it's not like you need to be an arborist to read it. Um, but unfortunately, the village doesn't have an arborist, so it's hard to kind of, you know, we, we actually brought in an arborist, then brought in the what save a tree back, and they, they all agreed that the tree's beyond healthy growth, mm -hmm. um, and that it could be a risk because it just, large limbs continue to die back. It's lost a lot of bark. Um, so well, it's unfortunate. When we looked at it, it, was, it looked like it was getting ready to blow out all those little buds. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, yeah it, will, it will leave. It's not, that yeah. it's, it's not dead by any means. It's not dead, yeah. you know. Um, but um, it, you know, it's the, but again, you know, independent. All these opinions are that the tree should come out. And and again, I, look, I, it's not it, it. Assuming that you take the you know the owner at their word, they understood the the plan to be a certain way. Um, we're also responsible to make sure that they understand it correctly as well. So I mean, I think that it it is where it is. I mean, we you know that the, the um, we'll, I think you know hopefully we'll learn from this and we'll kind of say oh, there you know these plans shouldn't really kind of exist in a vacuum. They really should kind of be part of the you know enforcement process because obviously the tree was important to us, right? You know, and um, and so we 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 should certainly want to put some focus on that and make sure that we give it its best chance. Regardless, it's difficult to it's difficult to do that much around a tree and save it. Um, and so they've agreed they're not required to, but they've agreed to put in another large specimen tree. Um, I just personally, you know, just driving by there. And just seeing, you know, they, they had sign out, you know, dirt for sale or whatever, you know, just whatever soil was there. And you, you just saw tractors and they're just taking huge chunks out. And, I, you know, it's pretty obvious to anyone passing by that that's going to kill a tree. I mean, it was, they were chopping in, in, in. And I mean, it was just, uh, you didn't have to send somebody out there to even oversee it. It was obvious it was happening and it was going to kill the tree. I just, well, the, the I, arborist... It kind of blew my mind then. No, without, without question, they had a tree protection fence that was actually a little bit further out than it needed to be. The question was the difference between any excavation or, en or excavation within the critical root zone inside the tree, okay. right? But what the arborist who wrote the plan said, oh, no, it's on day one. You know, when you start disturbing around it, mulch the tree, keep it watered, keep it fertilized. Um, 
the arborist that was that was caring for the tree, that's not the village's arborist, interpreted it that that starts when you start working in the critical root zone inside the fence. Okay. But the developer put the fence up very early on and put it further out than it needed to be to, to physically, it, like the tree protection zone, but obviously that was not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, that those other things, like, like mulching it and keeping it wet, no different than like in a garden center. Like I said, you keep the, the, the tree ball, the ball, root balls have to be kept damp, you know, because the tree's stressed. Um, and it's kind of the same situation, right? Because the tree's been, ma the, the root structure has been massively reduced, um, which it can survive, but it's gotta be kept wet, it's gotta be kept fertilized, it's gotta be kept, you know, but again, it's an old tree, so there's no, you know, but I, I think we, I, I think what I'm saying is I think we could have done better, I think on, on, on our side. Um, and 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 held the and held them to the plan or helped them to understand it if it was misunderstood. Um, and that's something that will you know I hopefully that we'll learn from and that will be part of you know that if this were ever again and I think it will be because I think people now really value trees. They used to kind of be there's just like I used to plant another one there. You know, I think I think that people are um, really value trees as as natural resources and as you know. So I think that will um, I think. We might, you know, be running into this again, where it's part of a, you know, a large site plan approval. There aren't many, you know, because again, in private property, we don't have any. Our code doesn't a lot, doesn't really restrict um, the removal of trees on private property, except for steep slope stuff, things like that, for erosion. So, okay, anything else? We have a motion to adjourn. I, mean, I had a question. Uh, what are you guys? What role do you guys play? Or are you trying to play in terms of? Making Cold Spring more sustainable and you know following the kind of environmental movement. Like, what role do you guys play in any of that? The planning board. The planning board is not a legislative body. Like, we don't write code and we don't we don't put laws into effect. That's the village board, which is a legislative body, which can do things like, you know, you know, write laws to encourage, you know, you know, passive building to encourage you know, green energy sources, you know, to the individual boards like the HDRB, you know, can do things like, you know, understand solar panels and understand that, you know, a hot water system has to be at a certain angle, you know, you, you can't move it because you don't like the look of it, you know, it has to function a certain way, you know, so I mean, you have to accept the fact that you don't get the aesthetics you want because this thing didn't exist in 1870. Right, you know, and so yeah, it's not going to look like a slate roof, but are you really going to forego green energy, you know, for you know for materials? Especially in most cases, the materials are missing anyway. You know, it's not like they're removing historic fabric and putting you know solar panels in place. So I think that the, the individual boards can certainly understand the approval of those things and make sure that it's that they're as they process the applications that they're you know that they're moving that stuff through quickly and that they're understanding it. I think the, it, there was a little bit of. You know, there was a little bit of adjustment time for the HRB, but I think they're very clear on solar panels and things like that. Because those things, they make, they make a big difference. The village, obviously the village board can have the biggest impact because they're the legislative body, right? One thing that they voted for, which is to participate in a, in a, in a CCA, community choice aggregation, which is, um, that's, it's a legislative action where you, the, you know, a community comes together, the town of Phillipstown, and then buys energy from a renewable source and what you do is, by default, you can then, your, your electric service provider, right, you know, say it's like Green Mountain Energy who does mostly, or wind farms or things like that, that unless you opt out of it, when you open up your central Hudson account, it's coming from a green renewable source. The village board, you know, signed on to that. The town board did. Um, so they're in the process. Those things take a while to come. But the legislative bodies, like the village board that can actually make laws, are the ones that can have the most far-reaching impact. And certainly, you know, you know, encourage them, write them about, you know, what are you doing with respect to, you know, saving water with, you know, with solar panels on, you know, on village-owned properties, um, solar farms. We, we don't really have that much land to really do anything like that, but um, the village board can have the most impact. Planting trees helps, obviously, too. I mean, you know, um, yeah, LED, could LED be a, lighting. Marathon could, could be a big method. solar plant, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> we, we rely on what's in the code right now to discharge our function. Yeah, the planning board That's is basically, we're not, you know, we're not interpreting or writing or we're not a legislative body. We basically just apply the code. But she said to, somewhere in the code says to encourage green building. So It does. How do you but we didn't put that in the code. The yeah. village board put that in the code. How do you encourage green building now? 
How do you go about that? It doesn't have a whole lot of teeth. I mean, so you basically can say, we'd like you to do, you know, green building. You can't force them to do green buildings. There are codes now that are saying that, that a certain percentage of it needs to be this. Mm -hmm. And a certain, if it's a certain number of square feet, they want you to look at energy consumption that is more restrictive than what the national code is or even the state or local code, right? So they're actually narrowing down to say, we don't want a bunch of, you know, really leaky buildings that are really just continuing to, uh, to build in an old way, right? But... Um, with the word encourage, it's, you know, there's... And what it says is, the planning board shall promote these measures, and it had been talking about green building, to the greatest extent practicable during site plan review process. So, one of the things we promoted was, um, you know, we talk about the lights being aimed downward rather mm -hmm. than up. We talk about not sending more water into our our sewage system mm -hmm. and so there are yeah. things that we we can do but we're not yeah. the applicant brings the plan to us mm -hmm. we don't tell them one area where you know this my firm river architects does passive buildings right so they're very low energy consuming buildings and so we've had several projects come to the planning board for review and in um in counting um the lot area coverage um, we've argued successfully to um, not include the extra insulation required to make an energy efficient building, especially when we're doing retrofits of an existing building. So, so that that's not, um, so we're basically not being penalized for conserving energy um, because you could make your buildings bigger, you know, like your usable, habitable space bigger by making your walls as thin as possible, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we make very thick walls. As, as thick as possible. <laughs> yeah, as thick as possible. Well. <laughs> Gonna carve out a little space inside. Move to adjourn. Was okay. that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. A second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Very Aye. nice. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so Matt, we're just looking at the meeting time. <laughs> it's it's it would be yeah. the second. So it's always the second. Everyone's second. been referring to the code. Yeah, and then right there. The code is in the parts of being updated. I'm here the tour. Okay. So and we're there was a the committee that's April been working here. on it for years, but it will continue when we want to. Um, attend one of their meetings, um, which are scheduled on the village website, to work and uh, they can fill you in on you get the specifics that you're interested in, and, and you could voice your opinion I'm, that I, I perhaps things that they put in have more teeth, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to things that Judith you wrote that do your best. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a, um, there are a group of uh, concerned citizens that are actively um, pursuing I just know that. Energy Let me get in there, Bobby. Well, that also had, had ozone, too.